Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth Hajim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly twenty years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor. Bring ten thousand from the tribe of Nephtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23, found on page 780. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until He show us His mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night, or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For these who sleep night, sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be as when a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, didn't you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I really like today's collect, which was once used for the second Sunday in Advent and moved here later. One reason is that the 19th century English composer William Russell made an excellent setting of this collect. Another is the old joke about the person who, taking the text literally, tore pages out of the Bible and ate them. After all, it says, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. But the main reason I like it is that it reminds us to pick up the Bible, read it, think about it, and make it part of our very daily existence, so that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope 
of everlasting life which God has given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. There are those who would say that the Bible is full of words coming from the human mind. There are those who approach the Bible with deep skepticism and relativistic thought, if at all. And there are those who believe that every word as translated into English is the literal word of God to be followed literally without questioning. Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest, you eat the Bible. The Bible, as we've received it, is very straightforward in some places and completely mysterious in others. Bible study is hard work, and understanding the difficult parts of the Bible requires careful reflection and faithful teachers. Since God has given us the ability to think and to reason, I suspect that while he expects us to approach Holy Scripture in faith and trust, he also expects us to ask questions about difficult passages, the ones that have puzzled people for generations, the ones that even make us wince. Today's lessons have a couple of tough passages. First, would God, because the Israelites did evil things, really allow a pagan king to punish them? Second, there's the repeated theme of punishment in Zephaniah. Third, there's the parable of the talents, which ends with a wicked and lazy servant being thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I think it would be fun and worthwhile someday to do a Bible study series on the outer darkness. This isn't the only passage that mentions that. But in a sermon focusing on wrath, punishment, and the outer darkness, would draw us far away from today's gospel message. First Thessalonians tells us that God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we're awake or asleep, we might live with him. The gospel lesson is a powerful and intense reminder that God is our Lord and we are his servants and that God wants us to obtain salvation. God has given all of us various gifts, or if you will, talents, according to our abilities. Some will have special abilities in business or music or acting or planning how to construct a building, and so forth. Some will have spiritual gifts in ministry, acts of mercy, peacemaking, teaching, healing, leadership, and so on. Whatever we've been given, God expects us to use them, and to use them wisely in service to others and in service to God. The talent referred to in the lesson would be worth around $250,000 or more in today's money. So 10 talents would be 2,500,000, maybe 3 million with inflation. So what was given out was no small sum. And God's gifts to us are likewise substantial, even though at times we may not think so. God expects us to take certain risks in using our talents rather than hiding them away so that at the end we will hear those words, well done, faithful servant. That message is universal. But in the year 2020, it has special meaning, at least to me. Things haven't been easy for anyone. The world is facing a pandemic unlike anything in the last 100 years. 
political and social divisions in the United States have inspired acts of hate and violence, verbal and physical. Everything seems different from how it was a year ago. And it may well be that God is testing our world to see whether we will remain faithful servants under this kind of hard duress. I don't know. What I do know is that the message of the Holy Scripture is the same now as it was last year, a hundred years ago, or thousands of years ago. God has given us gifts, and he expects us to use them in some way, even in the face of a world crisis. Therefore, in the face of that adversity, let us continue to encourage one another and to build one another up, just as we have always been doing. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for, and for our, our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For Donald, our president, and Joe, our president-elect. For Brian and Henry, our governors. For the leadership of the CSRA. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For our congregation in Valdosta, Christ Church. And in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, for the congregation in Santo Domingo, St. Philip. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop. For our clergy, George, John, Bill, and Erwin. And for all bishops and other ministers, for the members of our altar guild and linen guild. For all who serve God in the church. For the members of our search committee and this parish, during our time of self-study and search, that we shall grow in our commitment to one another and to the cause of your Christ, 
and may come to choose a faithful pastor to join us in our ministries in our parish, community, and diocese. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially John, June, Hester, Bobby, Aria, Bill, Margaret, Reese, George, Louis, Sid, Bob, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Alice, Norm, Daryl, Teresa, Bernice, Marty, Barbara, Jeff, Rich, Lonnie, Wayne, Dan, Jackson, Beverly, Billy, Melanie, Ted, Laurie, John, and all those we remember in our hearts. John. For all who are serving our country at home and abroad, that they may be strengthened by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, especially Joe, Dylan, Joe, Trey, Graham, Toby, Zach, Jonathan, Sylvan, Zachary, Bennett, Jim, and Andrew. Gracious God, we offer our humble thanks for the selfless lives of military men and women, past and present, and for their courageous service and sacrifice to our country and its people to secure the blessings of life, liberty, and justice for all. May we remember that our freedom was purchased at a high cost and grant us resolve to labor in faithful service until all share these same benefits. We pray for all health care providers, first responders, essential workers, and all who offer of themselves in the service to others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Give comfort and renew their energy, strength, and compassion. Grant, O God, that Your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Hear us, Lord. For Your mercy is great. We thank You, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially, especially Patricia Woodsey and Mr. Fred. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what, by what we, we have done, done and by what we have left undone. undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us and, and forgive, forgive us, that, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the, the glory of your, of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O Lord, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his, his coming, coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and, and ever-living God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, now Father, Father, send, send us, us out, out to do the work you, you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, Christ our Lord. To, to him, him, to you, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and, now and forever. forever. Amen. 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 The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
this week, remember the Reverend George Muir, who is traveling, and the Reverend John Jenkins, who is in self-quarantine. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.